So we will start our coverage of our French repertoire with a very interesting line. So after the starting moves e4, e6, d4, d5, to play so play e5. Um, ambitious because white is trying to get a space advantage on the king's side. And if he manages to bolster his center and then get all his pieces out, typically, you know, something like this, given enough time, uh, white will just enjoy the benefits of having more space. And then step by step, um, he will, so to say, convert his space advantage into a decisive action. Black has to act quickly and not just only make neutral moves and see what happens. And acting quickly in the sense of attacking and undermining white center. So therefore the first logical move is c5. But of course, both the central pawn, we continue knight c6, knight f3, all very logical. And here's the first crossroads. I very much like uh, bishop d7. It's the most flexible move. If white starts with a3, already um, we can go to a very interesting setup for black. So we see that a3 weakens the b3 square and we can clamp down on the queen side. And the ensuing plan is very interesting. So bishop e2, knight a5, knight bd2. So there's a wonderful maneuver. It's knight e7, castles knight c8. We are bringing the knight to b6 so that he helps the bishop to go to f4 and take over this important diagonal where he can invade the queen side. And here we see also why um, queen b6 uh, would be in the way. So if I go back a little bit, after queen b6, there is also such a line. But now, obviously, if you want to do the same thing, we would have to remove the queen from b6. It, it takes away the useful spot for the knight. This line with bishop d7 is a much better version of that. Now everything works out beautifully. Queen e1. Basically, white makes space to withdraw the bishop to d1. The point being that actually this a4 bishop, if it were to go to the c2, it can find a home on this diagonal and that's extremely annoying for white. So it would become the strongest bishop on the board. And therefore, preemptively, white has prepared the exchange. Since the bishop on d1 is awkward, um, black waits for white to release the pressure and improve one of black's pieces going into a4. And I believe generally this is already a very satisfactory position for black. And black has no weaknesses and long-term prospects on the queen side. Because there is another popular and important option for white, namely bishop e2 just proceeding with development. And here, like fighting uh, against white center immediately with f6. So obviously white will not relinquish his control of the center by taking on f6. That would be running counter to, to why he played e5 in the first place. So castles changed everything here. And now we see, since black has started to fight against white center, this pawn on e5 becomes exposed. So it's not only an asset in terms of grabbing space, but also a liability requiring defense. Bishop f4, then to knight e7, knight e2 castles. Already we can see there are ideas with knight g6. And again, it's clear that uh, the pawn on e5 uh, requires attention in terms of being defended. So white has this pawn, but he's also a bit tied down to it. And like I said, black structure is fine. The pieces will come out easily. Bishop e7, rook f8. And yeah, we can tuck away the king and then see what we do with this bishop. Sometimes it can go to c6, then we open up with d4. So there are plenty of, of ideas for black to improve his position and, and get some play. Now let's go back once more to this position after queen c7. As we saw, if white proceeds with the obvious moves, then black is kind of happy. So there's a hidden idea I'm playing rook e1, since now the pawn cannot be taken due to bishop h5 check and the queen is picked up. So we castle, and now white proceeds with this interesting pawn sacrifice. C4, and I will just give some sample lines here because games have been played. It's just, you know, an idea for white that developed over time because I guess people were not so happy with, you know, just going for traditionally defending on e5. So we take this guy, knight c3, knight f6, g3. Interesting, so white wants bishop f4. We go d4. Bishop f4, queen f5, and yeah, we have this extra pawn, very strong guy on d4, and here it's not so clear how white should proceed. If knight b5, 
Um, we take the strong knight, play bishop d6, exchanges are good when your material up and like there's nothing to fear for. And another sample line, uh, full piece sacrifice with bishop f3, going all out here to attack the black king. So mate is threatened, b6 forced, white tries again, gets the a7 pawn, f5 forced, queen b3, you can't let the queen in, so b5. And suddenly there's bishop d6, developing the last piece and using that the bishop on f3 is uh, hanging. And black has a satisfactory position. So the sample line show us that you know play becomes very lively, but black is definitely in the game and has his chances. And therefore I can just wholeheartedly recommend this, this line starting with bishop d7 to anyone facing the advanced French. Hey, check this video out to make sure that you get more important information to bring your chest to the next level.